Hello everybody and welcome back to the Fortress of Solitude. Today we're going to be checking out the finale of D-Squad in D-Squad issue 4 by Mark Guggenheim and Salva Espen. D-Squad face the Scourge head on in this issue as R2 races to help the downed QTKT, helping fix the astromech up before they can share another tender moment together. However, they are reminded by Triple Zero of the impending doom coming their way and are forced to battle the Scourge. Again, as I said in my previous review, I really love this idea that R2 and QT have this like kind of past romance that never really quite connected thanks to all of the stuff going on around them. It's a real nice little bit of character development for these guys. After the Scourge have been dealt with, the team look to finding Ajax Sigma and with QT's information on him, they learn that Jabba's palace contains the information they are looking for as Jabba is looking for Ajax Neural Core, something he's been after since Guggenheim's Han Solo and Chewbacca series where Ajax originated from. It's a nice bit of connective tissue, but a big problem here is the fact that last issue, we went to get a droid who could help us and now we are getting another droid who can help us again. It's just kind of reiterating what we as readers already know and kind of repeating the same thing again and again, which has been kind of a detriment to this series in the last two or three issues of it. To get into Jabba's palace and get the info, R2 and the droids don disguises, but along the way R2 notices the Millennium Falcon is parked outside the palace, and upon getting into the place, they find that it's been taken over by the Scourge, and not only that, but Lando Calrissian and Lobot are in there, and they actually run into them. This was such a cool little tie-in to the Star Wars ongoing by Charles Soule, where we saw Lando's mission into the palace, and I love that it's just a couple of pages, but it's actually more of a tie-in than what we're getting from most of these Dark Droids books at the moment. Lando thinks he recognizes R2 despite the disguise but waves it off and R2 and QT fight off hordes of the droids to get the data. I quite liked the use of the droids tools during this fight with QT using her little drone to distract the scourge and R2 using his buzz saws and hydro spanners to just take apart the droids. With the data retrieved they are able to track Ajax to his colony and find him post his encounter with the scourge which we saw in the main dark droids book. It was also a battle that cost him all of his people lives so he's pretty down on himself. R2's drive to help C-3PO all on his own ends up being the spark Ajax needed to fight back again. This is a great use of R2's character as he's always been there for his friends and will do what needs to be done to help them and he's always had a mind of his own as well. He can think for himself which is a big thing for Ajax as he wants droids to be able to take hold of their own destiny and be their own people and he sees that in R2 and it's sort of the little spark of hope that gives him the energy to stand up against the scourge yet again. Hopefully this also means these characters will carry over into the final issue of Dark Droids now that everything has kind of come together for that final showdown on Scourge 1. Again D-Squad excels in its action and little moments between these characters, especially with R2 and QT over these last two books. But even in this final issue the book suffered from more roundabout story progression and felt like we were just going in circles with going to get a droid to get the next droid to get the next droid. I do appreciate the connective tissues to the other books of the Dark Droids series since it gives the event a little bit more of a continuity of where things are happening and when and where they're happening but even then I don't think it's enough for it to not be a bit of a clunky issue. I'm going to give this issue a 6.5 out of 10. 